Can someone let me know if you hear me? Let me see here. It looks like it's working. Yeah, you should be hearing me. Let me know if you don't hear me. I hear you, Laura. Awesome. Thanks, Mary. Okay. Okay. Oh, Chris is here. Hey, Chris. Missed you guys on Tuesday. Fern, Krista, Chris. Hey, Karen. Who else is here? Mary. Okay, cool. Guys, want anything you want me to do special tonight? Any special requests? Kind of a small group. There's seven of us. Some people might pop on, but who knows? Okay. All right. I had a good time on my trip. I'm super happy to be home. And um, it was really pretty epic. We saw lots of stuff, did lots of things. Okay. All right. So hope everyone's well. And um, gosh, I got back and it's like full autumn. It's going to warm up. That's great. Okay. So let's begin. Um, you'll notice at some point that light is going to go on. Oh, okay. Great. Hips. Thanks, Vern. Um, Thanks for the suggestion. We shall do hips. Let's focus on hips tonight. Anyway, that corner light is going to go on. It's on a timer. So when you see it pop on, don't worry about it. Okay, hips. Hey, since we're doing hips, let's begin on our backs. So come on down. We get to start on our backs tonight. Now, if you want to, if you're not down already, take your arms forward hang on to a tray, dig your heels into the mat and come down slowly. Now, listen, as you're coming down, draw your belly back and round your back into the ground. Round it down one little vertebrae at a time, bring your arms overhead and your feet down. Give yourself a nice, huge stretch. Now bring the right knee in. Grab a hold of the shin, squeeze the elbows in towards you and the shoulders away from you. Yeah. Opening the right hip, just beginning here. Now let's just kind of relax here for a moment and breathe. Feeling the front side of your belly push into your right thigh. Use that movement as a massage, as a self-massage. And keep pressing down on the shin. Keep going for some more opening in the hip. Yeah, so you're using the muscles of your upper arms here. Keep your right hand on your shin. Slide your left hand down to the top of your ankle. Push the inside of your right knee out to the side gently, okay? So you still have the heel close to your body. Right hand comes close to the left hand, bend both elbows, and just try to get that heel to come up toward the belly button. It's not gonna reach it, but that's, that's, that's the direction. Getting even more opening in that right hip. All right, now straighten that right leg to your ceiling. Clasp behind the thigh with interlocked fingers. Bend your elbows out to the sides. Press your shoulders away from you. And now press your palms into your thigh to draw that thigh closer to your torso. We're getting the back of the leg here. Now, as you breathe, I want you to feel how that hamstring, the hamstring muscles go all the way up into that right hip area, right? So if the hamstrings are nice and relaxed and open, it's easier for the hip to stay open. Okay, now straighten that leg to the ceiling again and flex the heel, bring your left arm out with the palm up right arm comes to the inside of that leg, gets a hold of it, bend the elbow a little bit to release the shoulder, and now slowly 
press your right leg down toward the right side of your mat. Now try to keep the hips facing the ceiling, okay? So you don't wanna roll your hips to the right. And if you wanna just check that, take your left hand, place it on your left hip bone and make sure it's facing upward. Now breathe into that right inner thigh, soften into it and soften the right shoulder. Draw your navel down to your mat, lift your right leg back to the ceiling, right arm comes out to a T position now, this time the left arm comes across your body, takes a hold of the outside of that right leg, bend that elbow to draw the leg across your body and toward the left side. Now listen, we're just warming up, so not too much here, not too much, just, you know, just a little twist. Now bend the knee, bring it back to center, clasp over the shin, and let's go back to the beginning, pressing that right thigh into the right torso, okay? And you'll notice that your right hip space is much more open now. Release that leg, come into Shavasana, and I want you to feel what you've created in your right hip with those moves. Free your belly, let the breath be deep. Let the warmth in your right hip just really radiate into the thigh. Maybe even up a little bit into the torso, maybe even throw it down the entire right leg. All right, left knee, bend it, bring it to the chest, clasp over your left shin bone this time, bending the elbows, pressing that thigh down. Yeah, yeah, as much as you can, squeezing the elbows in toward your body, pressing the shoulders away from your ears. Chin to the chest, everyone. Feel it, we're starting on the left hip here. All right, keep your left hand over the left shin, slide your right hand down to the top of the ankle, clasp it, take your left hand to the inner thigh, press that left knee out to the side as you draw your heel toward your belly button. Now left hand goes right next to the right hand, keep that knee pressed to the side, bend both elbows, to take that heel a little closer to your belly. Soften your shoulders, make the upper arm bones work, excuse me, upper arm muscles work instead of the shoulders. Shoulders are still working, but I, what I mean is that kind of shoulder strain where you're picking them up towards your ears, you know, that, that would be a, that'd be an easy thing to do in this pose, let's put it that way. Breathe here, feel it, left hip opening. All right, lift that left leg up, take it to the ceiling, flex the heel, push that heel to the ceiling. Hey everyone, check out your right leg, make sure it's coming straight down from the right hip, not out to the side. Intertwine your fingers behind that left thigh, bend the elbows to take that leg closer to you and feel all the space you're making in the back of your right thigh, space that your hamstrings can stretch into. Soften your shoulders, stay with us. Feel your breath, let it go all the way to the belly. Right arm comes out with the palm up, T-pose. Left arm comes across, well, half T-pose. Left arm comes across, grabs the inside of that leg, gently takes it, slowly and gently to the left side. Okay, you gotta coax your body to open it, right? If you go fast, the body reacts by pushing against what you're trying to do. Let it, 
let it trust, let it trust the opening. And here we go, hanging out here, feeling the inner thigh open. Again, make sure the right hip is facing the ceiling, not rolled over to the left. It might roll a teeny bit. It might be impossible to keep it straight up, but basically facing the ceiling. Bend that knee, take it back to center. Straighten the leg again. Let the left arm out to a T pose. Right arm comes across, grabs the side of that leg. And now we're gonna bring it over. Okay, we're doing just a little twist here, not too much, okay? This is mostly opening the hip, the thigh. Can you feel that? Not too much twist. And bringing it back to center, bending the knee, taking a hold of the shin again with intertwined fingers, bending the elbows, bringing that thigh in. See, we're back where we started. Squeeze your elbows in, chin to the chest, hang out here, feel your breath. Now you can tell, right? Can you tell how opening the hips really also opens the mind. Can you feel the relaxation across your forehead? A lot of emotional stuff stored in the hips. Oh, there we go. Let it go, come into Shavasana and enjoy both hips nice and open. Spread your legs, feet open, arms open. Yeah, feel that warmth. Take the warmth from your left hip, draw it down into your thigh, maybe even farther, all the way to the toes. And then feel it in the hip and maybe even radiate some of that up toward your lower torso. All right, bring both knees up. Give yourself a nice big hug and bring your feet back down to the ground. Okay. All right. We're gonna go into a bridge pose here. So make sure that the feet are parallel, like you have skis on, right? They're not crossing at the tips, if you extend it. Okay, pick up all 10 toes, and I want you to really spread your toes apart as much as you can. Now, feel the large ball mound, under the large toe, the big toe, small ball mound, ball mound, under the small toes. I want you to press into both of those. Feel the tops of your thighs light up, relax your shoulders. Pull your navel down toward the, toward the ground. Release your toes gently to the ground. Now feel both ball mounds and the heels. Feel the arch in between them and slowly begin to come up. Okay, keep that energy of the feet. Keep feeling your feet. Go check them every once in a while as you roll your bridge up here. Now slowly bring the bridge down. Okay, we're doing just a little up and down bridge to begin with. Now bring your knees to your chest, squeeze. Release your feet to the ground, a little closer to your buttocks than they were before. Bring your arms in just a bit closer. Palms are down, chin is to the chest. Pull your navel in, scoop your tailbone up, just a little scooping up. So just feel the lower back lift up off the ground. You're using your glutes. Release the tailbone back down. Okay, again, pick it up, tailbone and sacrum, feel it, lower back, pick it up, 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 up. Hold it up, attention to the feet, feel them. The little triangles underneath, press into them. There go the thighs lining up. Let's go, lift it up, lift it up. Just lift your bridge. Chin to the chest and halfway down and up, halfway down and squeeze your glutes. Now listen, when you're doing this up and down, 
it's really easy for the knees to splay open to the sides. Keep them parallel. And if you want a little trick to keep them parallel, feel like you're squeezing a pillow between your thighs. Every time you lift up, squeeze that pillow. One more time, squeeze and hold it up. Pulse at the top, pulse, pulse. Just press those hip bones up. And bring it back down again, slowly. Knees to the chest again. Open up the lower back with that. Open the arms to the sides, palms are up. All right, lift the legs, you're in a reverse tabletop pose. So the knees are over your hips, shins are parallel to the ground. Now, pull your navel way down. I want you to really get some energy under there to really press your lower back to the ground. Just hold that, squeeze. Keep it out of the shoulders, just in the belly. Hold, squeeze, hold, squeeze it. Squeeze it down, 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 and soften it up a bit. Bring the arms up, palms are facing each other. Bring the hands together, intertwine. Bend your elbows, slip your hands under your head. Keep those elbows nice and open. Flex both heels, pull the belly down again. Get some energy going down there once again. Look straight up to the ceiling and now press your face, your chin, your chest up there. Hold it. That's your upper, upper abdominals doing this, everyone. Hold it and pulse. Just a few inches up and down, pulse. You're going straight up. Elbows are wide. Straight up. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Squeeze your knees into your chest. Push your legs away. Knees into the chest. Push your legs away. Heels are flexed. Press. Open. Slow and controlled. Open. Press. Open here. Lift the legs up to the ceiling. Take the head down to the ground. Open the arms in, arms in a T position. Soften your shoulders. Flex your heels. Pull your navels down. Let those shoulders relax. Turn your feet out and we're gonna scissor kick. Yeah, so that heel just comes in front and behind. Listen, while you're scissor kicking, push those heels up to the ceiling at the same time you're kicking. Yeah, okay, all right. Then you keep the legs long by pushing through the heels and you start coming closer to the floor with this kick. And then you put more emphasis on the lower abdominals, okay? If the lower back hurts, you start coming up again. Don't go that low, bring it up again. And bring it down again. Hold it at the maximum point for you and bring it up again. All right, bend your knees, hug them into your chest, release your lower back here. Release back into reverse tabletop, intertwine your fingers, place your palms under your head, elbows are open wide. Face and chest straight up to the ceiling. Here we go, we're gonna bicycle. Straighten the right leg, bend the left knee. Lift the torso some more, now turn it toward your left thigh, switch sides, lift torso, turn toward right thigh. Again, so listen, if you lift and turn very deliberately, then you're really forcing those abdominal, especially those obliques to work. If you just throw the weight of your body side to side, the inertia, the weight of your body is doing more of the work. Now hold it to one side and flex, flex, pulse, pulse. I've, by flex, I mean flex the right heel. Pulse, go to the other side, flex the other heel. And pulse, 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 
bring it to center, bring it down. All right, open it up to a T pose, bring your legs up, soften your shoulders, right leg wraps around the left, bring those knees toward your chest, and then the chin toward your chest, and slowly drop your legs to the left side. Let them drop into the floor. If you can't get them into the floor, you're at home. So you may be able to grab a pillow, put that under your legs so you can really soften the legs into the pillow. So the aim is for this to be a very passive stretch where you're not working at all. You're just letting the body stretch. Add the breath. Now feel how the glutes that wrap over the right hip are really getting this nice stretch with the hip twisted, the hips twisted to the left like this. Now, if you can make that top leg get even heavier, that right leg and fall more deeply toward the ground and feel the spinal twist that follows. Now go back to your breath. Draw your navel back, squeeze your legs together and bring your legs back to center. Uncross your legs, rock them side to side Lift your legs up a bit so that you can walk your hips one at a time toward the bottom of the mat. All right, chin to the chest, drop your heels, bend your knees, left leg comes over the right. Bring those knees closer to you, soften your shoulders, palms are up. Okay, chin to the chest, neck and shoulders relaxed. Slowly. Legs drop to the right. Go to your breath. Torso is really twisted, right? So the breath is moving through some resistance. Just guide your breath, direct it. Take it all the way down to your belly. Feel your belly move as you breathe. Okay, now awareness to that top left leg. Feel it get heavier, release it, release it. And then you get even more twist. And now add your breath. Squeeze your legs together, draw your navel back, lift those legs back to center, uncross. Let's rock it side to side and then in circles. Remember we did the core already? Okay, so Fern, you got hips and core. All right, reverse. All right, cross at your ankles, rock it up and down along your spine. So you can swing on your swing or you can come all the way up into seated pose. One more, <laughs> needed more momentum there. Okay, so seated pose. Just gonna throw this in just cause we're talking hips tonight. Okay, just a nice seated pose here. I want you to take your right leg in the front and the left leg behind. Okay, try to keep your spine as straight as possible. 
and bring your fingertips in front of you walk them forward just going to get some even some more and deeper opening in the right hip here now drop your head curl down and breathe oh yeah feel that hip both of them actually and walk your hands back okay that front leg is your baby pick it up take your left arm under your foot so that you're cradling your foot and then if you can your right arm under your knee now bend your elbows to bring that leg closer to you and then just rock your baby back and forth a bit Pigeon pose, really, it's a, it's a seated pigeon pose is what it is. Now, circle your leg. And if you want to, you can even close your eyes and feel how you're circling around your sitting bone. This is really good for the sciatic nerve and of course for the right hip. All right, release that leg send it forward and straight take the left sole of the foot into the right inner thigh and come down over your right leg and slowly bring it up switch legs let the left leg come in front of the left leg, of the right leg, excuse me, left leg is in front, right leg is in back. All right, so just take a moment to open this up through the hips, then the fingertips in front of you, walk them forward. So don't, don't worry about a straight back, okay? Really what I want you to do is just really think about opening from the hips, from the back of you. Okay, now curl over yourself. Just curl over yourself, drop your head and breathe here. Really big, full breaths. Take that breath into the hips. and walk your hands back we're going to pick up that second baby that's our left leg so try to scoop it under the leg bend the elbow to bring that heel as close to your torso as possible and then if you can get the left arm under if not just just one arm just hold it with one arm and bring that other arm to the front otherwise get it under the knee try to sit up as straight as you can lifting that knee and then rock that baby and then begin to circle around your left sitting bone see what that feels like now remember keep your belly pulled back because you really need some balance here and some energy from the core in order to do this Okay, now straighten your left leg. Bring your right um, sole of the foot into the left inner thigh. And of course, you really want to keep that right knee pushed down to keep the right lower back open. And then hips facing forward and just come on down, straight down over that left leg. And then of course, at a certain point, you're not gonna be able to keep it straight anymore. Well, then you just let it fold over and don't worry about the straightness. And bring it back. All right, here we go. Bring it into table pose. Let's see, I'm looking like I need some more. Yeah. 
I need to pull back a little bit. There we go. Okay, table pose. Now, from table pose, we can do some cat and cow. So ready? You're on your own. Round that back up to the ceiling. Drop your head. Take your cat pose. And then drop your belly. Lift your hips. Spread them apart behind you. Send your heart forward and lift from the top of your head. Cow. Okay? Cat and cow, everyone. Just flow through it. Bring it back to table pose, nice flat back. Press into both of those hands. Stay nice and strong. Press, press, press. Pull your navel up. Listen to this. I want you to draw your right shoulder back as you look over it slowly, slow motion style. And at the same time, feel how the right hip kind of comes toward that shoulder. Getting a lateral twist in the spine. Bring it back, back to center. Okay, find center, recalibrate there. Left shoulder, bring it back slightly and then look over it. Back to center, right side again. So you're keeping your belly lifted, you're staying strong. Left side, you're simply making a lateral turn, a sideways turn in the spine. Getting back to center here. Here we go, everyone. Curl those toes, lift it up, down dog. Okay, we're here. All right, so walk your dog, whatever feels good. You can take your hip side to side, just keep that belly hoisted up. Keep those hips shifting back. Keep those hands shifting forward. All right, drop both heels as close to the mat as you can to open the backs of the legs, the calves. Keep your belly lifted. Left foot comes in just a bit. Right foot sweeps up. We're in a one-legged dog, everyone. Press your chest back by pressing forward into the hands. Flex your right heel, pulse it toward the ceiling. Nice pulses here, nice and strong. Hips are facing the mat, they're not open to the right yet. Lift it a little higher. Now open the hips to the right. Now lift the right ankle a little closer to your ceiling. Press deeply into the left hand, everyone. Left shoulder stays open and strong. Pulse. Right ankle toward the ceiling. Lift it a little higher, bend the knee, take the foot back, press into that left arm, left hand, keep it open, circle the foot, getting nice opening, little clicks in the ankle, reverse. Now straighten that leg and flex that heel, bend it, straighten it. Bend it, straighten, push back, push back with your torso. Bend, straighten. You know that there's a tendency to flow forward when you're in down dog and you want to keep pushing back. Bend, straighten, hold it. Hips go to the mat. Look forward, right foot between your hands. Okay, lunge. All right, shimmy those left toes back. Get some good, good feeling of length in that left leg. Squeeze your left butt cheek. Squeeze it some more. Pull the belly back as well. Okay, nice and strong. You got it. Press deeply into the right foot. We're going to straighten the right knee. Come back to pyramid. Feel that left heel drop and the left calf muscles open. Walk your hands back. Fingertips are facing the front of your mat, everyone. Bend your elbows back. Drop your forehead more closely to your shin. Release this. Bend the knee. Take it forward. Stop when it's over your ankle. Press back with that left heel. Squeeze 
the left glute, take your left hand close to your right foot. Reach out with your right arm. Now listen up, left knee comes down, top of the foot comes down, right arm comes up and you're turning. Yeah, we brought, the, we brought that leg down behind us. Now bring the arm back, you can twist some more. Notice if your right hip is going out toward the right side of your mat, draw toward center. Turn your right arm, or excuse me, your right hand back, take your right arm back, bend the elbow, give yourself a bind, feel where the top of that hand is touching your side body and use that to twist some more. All right, release the arm up to the ceiling, then bring it forward, turn the torso forward toward the front of your mat, curl your left toes under, lift your left knee, press that left heel back. Oh yeah, it's a deep lunge. That's exactly what you want. Drop that knee again, take the top of the foot to the mat, come up to the fingertips to raise your torso and then press your hips forward, left hip flexor. Breathe into it, let the belly move. And release back down. Curl the toes, lift the knee, turn the left foot out, take, take a peek at it. Turn it out and hop it forward a bit. Maybe even move the right foot out a bit. Get more space for your traps and then lift up into warrior two. Excuse me, warrior one. All right, here we go. Now, don't forget about that back leg and all the support that it gives you. Press into the edge of it. Press some more until you can feel it all the way up into your left hip. Now press deeply into the right sole of your foot. Take your hands and Namaste Mudra over you. Bring them to your heart center. Lift your elbows. Press your hands together firmly. Draw your navel back. Rotate your fingertips toward your chest. Press your wrists away from you. And release back into Namaste Mudra. Pull your navel back, squeeze your left butt cheek. Turn your torso to the right. Now back to center. Okay, now to the right. Listen, you guys, it's really slow, but strong. Back to center. One more time, take it to the right. And back to center. Lift it up, both arms come up. Warrior one again. Bring your right arm forward, reach, 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 reach. Turn that palm to the inside of your thigh, push it into your thigh. Keep that leg put, that right leg. Open the left arm behind you. Turn the left palm to the ground. Release the right arm without moving that right leg. Both palms are down, this is warrior two. Now, if you don't feel the power in warrior two, you're just not placing your attention in the right place. I want you to feel the foundation of this pose. I want you to feel your legs, your hips. Believe me, you need a lot of strength to hold this pose. Press down into them some more to increase that strength. Rotate the right palm up to the ceiling, lift it, drop the right left arm and just scoop overhead, reverse warrior. Bring it back to warrior two. Soften your shoulders, lift your heart, dig down into your feet again. Now look out at your drishti, right middle finger, pull your heart out toward that finger as you bring that finger out. Drop your right arm to the inside of your right leg. Keep them there. Lift the left arm. Turn your torso to the left some more. 
Those of you who want to bind, turn that arm back. Give yourself a bind. Use that bind to twist some more. And you can even do a deep bind. Get the right arm underneath the leg. If you're doing this double bind, try straight in the right leg and dropping your head. Release it. Warrior two. Warrior one. And bring it forward and down. We are going to do a pigeon, even though we did a seated pigeon, just because tonight's a hip night. So moving it into pigeon pose. If you do pigeon on your back, you're going to want to bend your knees over your hips and then place the right ankle on the top of the left thigh, grab under the left thigh and pull it toward you. If you're down on the ground, you want to, you want to come down. You don't have to go all the way down. You know, what you just want to do is you want to get the feeling of really putting some weight into that right hip, using the weight of your body to release it. So you just want to really kind of get into this chill mode here. Feeling your belly move beneath you. You may even feel that belly pushing into your body and opening your right hip some more so that movement of the belly could be part of the pose here. All right, lifting it up. Hands on either side of the mat, curl your left toes, lift that knee, press into the hands, draw the right leg back, walk it to the center of your mat. Sit in a little chair, grab the backs of your ankles and drop your head. Breathe here, let your spine just curve over your legs here. Notice how the neck is just falling like a waterfall at the front of your at the front of your knees. Let your head be heavy. Now send your arms back, bring them forward for a full arm chair pose. Lift up. Swan dive forward. Nice forward fold here. Now you can bend your knees or not. It's up to you. Grab the backs of your ankles, sit in your little chair, drop your head. Swing your arms back and forward, chair pose, lift, swan dive forward. Monkey pose, press into the shins, extend the spine. Pull your navel up, right fingertips drop in front of your feet at the center line. Drop, excuse me, drop, bend your right knee, lift your left sitting bone, now lift your left arm. Binders, you can bind this. And if you bind, you can twist a bit. All right, release that left arm. Let the left fingertips fall into the place where the right fingertips are. Bend your left knee, lift your right, right hip, right arm. Binders combined. Release. 
both hands to the ground next to each other, bend both knees, swing the arms forward, chair, come up, swan dive down. Forward fold here, drop your head, release. Monkey pose and refold. Hands come forward, feet go back. Look for your down dog again. Okay, make it strong, everyone, nice and strong. So you wanna lift your belly, press it up and back, drop your heels, send your hands forward, your torso back. Right foot comes in just a bit. Left leg lifts up this time. Hips are still facing the mat. Flex the left heel, pulse it. Slow, control pulses with a long leg. Keep it lifted. Turn your hips open to the left. Lift your left ankle a little bit more. Press into your right hand. Here we go, more pulsing. Lift it a little higher, bend the knee, let the foot fall back, press more deeply into your right hand. Press, 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 as if you wanna press the mat away from that hand. You really wanna press deeply. Now circle the foot, that is, other direction. Straighten, bend, straighten. Nice and strong. You're gonna feel this in the glutes. Straighten, bend, straighten. Hips turn toward the mat. Look forward, left foot comes forward between your hands. Your knee is over your ankle and you are wide. So shimmy those right toes back to get a lot of distance between the left foot and the right. All right, now press into those right toes, squeeze the right butt cheek, press the right heel back some more, keep that energy in your left leg. Now press down into the right foot until you feel the calf muscles and even the thigh muscles light up. Now slowly straighten the left knee. Walk your hands back, fingertips stay facing forward. Now you can bend your elbows back and drop your forehead toward your shin. And release. Press that right heel back, get a lot of energy in that back leg. Take your right hand close to your left foot, reach forward with your left arm, drop your right knee and the top of your right foot, lift that left arm to take your torso turned. Now draw your left hip towards center. There's a tendency for it to move out. Okay, now those of you who want to, you can take a bind, you can pull that arm back, turn that palm behind you, bring the arm back, bend the elbow, take the top of that hand somewhere into your back or side body, press into it so you can turn a little more. And release, bring that arm forward. Straighten everything up so your torso is facing the mat again. Curl those back toes, lift them up. Press the heel back again and squeeze the hip. Shimmy the toes back. Drop the knee. Top of the foot comes to the mat. Walk your fingertips back and lift your torso. Now send your hips forward. It's like you're trying to press your hips toward the front of your mat. Hip flexor, right side. 
Release that, curl the toes, lift the knee, look back at your right foot, turn it out and hop it forward a bit. Look for a warrior one stance. So you want, you don't want the feet to be on the same line. If you drew a line from your left foot all the way down to the back of your mat. You don't want your right foot near that line. You want it to have its own line off to the side. All right, hope that helped. <laughs> oh, that's what I mean by the train tracks. Here we go, everyone, warrior one on the other side. Now engage that back leg, press into the edge of that foot, squeeze the butt cheek, draw the navel back. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Take your hands together overhead. Namaste mudra, bring it in front of your chest, not into your chest, in front of your chest. Press those hands together deeply. Feel your shoulders light up. Now rotate your fingertips toward you and press your wrists away from you. Okay, we all need that from keyboarding. Release back into a mudra, a strong mudra. Draw your belly back, turn to the left. Now forward, now to the left. Forward, to the left, forward. Lift both arms, warrior one again. I'm just turn it around so you can see this better when we go to warrior two. So left arm reaches forward, comes to the inside of the thigh. Now that hand is gonna keep that thigh in place. Lift up with the right arm, bring it behind you. Notice how it takes the torso to the right. Right palm faces the ground. Now release the left arm palm facing the ground. Look out at the drishti, just over your left middle finger. Draw toward that drishti. Drop the left arm, lift the right. If you want to, you can take a bind, double bind. For those of you who want, or no bind at all. Now, for those of you who have a double bind, you might want to try to straighten that front leg and drop your head. Release back to warrior two. Soften the shoulders, lift through the heart. Rotate that left palm toward the ceiling, lift it up to the ceiling. Let that right arm just drop. Let it just drop right down. Back to warrior two. Turn your left foot so it's facing the right side of your mat. Move your right foot over so you can get into a, a nice V position <coughs> so, we can, so we can go upside down. So here we go, bringing it upside down slowly. And just keep it upside down, breathe there. Palms under your head, palms flat into the, into the ground. Straighten your arms to lift your torso. Now lift your belly. So right now, your torso should feel like super, super like supported by your, by your core. Walk your hands forward and then draw back. Do you let your head fall between your biceps? Press into the outer edges of both feet. Glide forward, walk your hands back. Toes out, heels in, and come on up to horse pose. 
or goddess squat. So knees are open, toes are out to the sides. So calm down a little deeper here and lift up just a little, little deeper. And lift. So we've opened the hips. Now we want to really use the hips. We want to use our base and our core. Up <clears throat> and down and stay down. Okay, left elbow comes to the top of the left thigh, right arm comes overhead. Give yourself a good stretch. Push down into the right heel, open the right waist reach out some more, switch sides. All right, so you start by just opening up, pressing into the heel. Notice how that unlocks the waist. Draw your navel back and reach some more. And bring it back to center. Okay, hop together or heel toe, heel toe. Arms come overhead, inhale, open the legs just a little bit, okay? We're going to waterfall here. So remember, when you waterfall, you're going to sit back in a chair, okay? So you're going to, yeah, push your butt back and down when you come down and bend those knees. Here we go. Inhale up, open the mouth, full exhale. All right, so make some noise here. Three more. Two more. Last one, let's stay down. All right, knees are bent and the head is just flopped over. Bend your elbows, clasp opposite elbows with your fingertips. Feel how those arm bones get more weight when you do that. And it allows you to drop more closely to the floor. Release your neck and your head. And now just move your trunk from side to side like an elephant. Your torso just swings gently from side to side. Try not to create any tension, keep it slow. Back to center, release your arms. And we're gonna slowly roll up. Super slow, no hurry. And when you get to the top, find your Tadasana pose. And slowly bring your arms up to the ceiling, overhead, hands come into namaste position. Soften your elbows, bend them to the side, let the mudra fall towards your crown, but not quite touch it. Soften the shoulders, press the heart forward, tuck the chin back. Now squeeze the hands into one another and release them. And squeeze, release. Squeeze, release. Now let them fall to your heart. And drop your forehead to your fingertips. And release to the ground. Okay, belly down. Get yourself in a nice restorative crocodile pose here. Feet toed in, hands stacked, forehead on the top hand, and relax. And of course, you know you can use your belly 
pressing into this hard surface into your floor to open the lower back, right? Because that when the belly has nowhere to go and it's, you know, it's opening and it's expanding down toward the ground, it has nowhere to go. So that energy gets shifted to the lower back and you can use it to open that lower back space and release pressure from there. I should say release tension. And hands chest level, feet are toed in, bring the legs a little closer. They should be hip distance or closer. Lift your pubic bone off your mat, roll it up towards your belly button, gently let it come back down, open that lower back, let the hips open. Okay, draw those elbows in close to your body, press your elbows down towards your feet. Okay, make sure you're facing your mat. You're not looking forward at all. You're straight on looking at your mat. And then when you come up, feel yourself recruiting your back muscles to lift you, pressing into your hands as little as possible. Unless of course you move to back bend. But if you're just in a, in a cobra pose, you're, you're just using your back muscles, or at least you can, that's possible. Coming back down slowly. Feeling your forehead touch your mat. Completing that asana and coming up into another. One more. And then when you come to the top of your cobra or your back bend, you can draw one shoulder back and look over it. And then the other. And come back down again, releasing the pressure into the hands, not pressing into the hands as quickly as you can using the back muscles. Forehead touches your mat, head turns to one side, release your arms, palms are up, open your legs a bit, feet are toed in. Very slowly turning your head to the other side, taking your time. Bring your head back to center, palms along the sides of your chest, lift it up into table pose again. Lift your belly. You know what, let's, let's open the hips one last time. Okay, from this table pose, take your right hip, send it back and to the right, almost like you wanna, you're sending it back as far over to the right as you can and as far back as you can. Now lift up to, co uh, excuse me, to table. Other side, left hip, bring it all the way to the side and back. So it's like, you're, you're, it's like you're going into a child's pose, but your hips are going to one side or the other, right? Like toward one of your feet. Okay, so just keep that up a little bit. It's a really nice hip opener and lower back release. Two more of those. And as you're doing those, if you draw your belly back, you get even more opening. All right. Now we're at table. And now we're bringing the hips straight back. 
for child's pose. And then with your hands, your arms, wherever you put them, just make sure your shoulders are comfy. You may even want to flip the palms over, bring the arms to the sides of your body. Okay, and no matter what you're doing with your arms, make sure the elbows are bent. All right, and then you can flip it over for Shavasana. Okay, so release your body completely. Really opened up the hips tonight. That should feel good. Oh, yeah. And with every exhale you take, feel the weight of your body drop more deeply into your mat and into the floor. All right, so for the next, you know, five, six, seven, eight minutes, you're just gonna let your body relax. So anything that is on your mind right now, spinning around, just kind of feel as if you're just taking it and putting it next to you in a, in, a, in a little basket, in a little container. Okay, you can always grab it when you're done with this, but right now put it there and simply feel your body breathing. It's fine if your mind keeps going back, just bring it to the breath again and again. That's your anchor. All right, because the nature of the mind is to be busy and there's just nothing you can do about that, okay? You give your mind something to focus on that's in the here and now, and that's the breath. That's about the easiest and fastest way you can relax the body. Just Bring it to now, bring it to your breath. Take your mind to your breath. And then you start to feel your mind ease up. Fight a little less. Okay, so you deserve this. Feel your body getting heavier. Feel the back of your head touching the pillow or the floor. Soften the weight of your skull into that point. Feel the muscles of your face and your scalp relax. And feel the skin of your face. Really relax. Let your tongue be soft at the bottom of your mouth. Let your lips just rest gently over your teeth. Eyelids rest gently over your eyeballs. Soften both your eyeballs. Go to your belly, watch it move as you breathe.
Feel where your upper back touches the mat or your floor. Release across your upper back, all those muscles, both your shoulders, your chest. Feel the right arm release and relax more deeply and your right hand. Go to your left arm, relax your left arm more deeply and the left hand. Notice your chest move as you breathe. Notice your rib cage move as you breathe. And with your exhale and the release of your ribs and your rib cage, allow the middle of your torso to be completely relaxed. Moving down to your lower torso. Feel your belly relax, your lower back. Notice the movement of your belly when you breathe and use that movement to deepen your relaxation. Feel your hips release, your pelvis. Your buttocks. Just feel a nice warm heaviness at the lower part of your torso. And then take that warmth down the left leg, left thigh, left knee, your left shin bone and your left calf and into your left foot. Experience your left leg. Go to your right hip, take the warmth and down your leg, your right thigh, your right knee, your right shin, your right foot. Experience your right leg your left leg, your torso, your right arm, your right hand, your left arm and your left hand, your head and release all the muscles of your neck. Now just breathe deeply. Send that breath within you. Wide open now. Feel that inner peace that's flowing. Just let that fill you. And in tonight's Shavasana, if you have an intention, a prayer or a sankalpa that you'd like to place in your practice, you can form that now. 
You can see it, you can say it, you can think it, whatever works for you. Take that seed to your heart center and breathe into it. Give it prana, give it life. And with your next exhale, release it. Okay, slowly making your transition. And gently rolling to your right side. Left is okay too. Slowly bringing yourself to seated pose. And when you come to seated pose, just close your eyes, drop inside again. And arms open to the sides and then up, mudra overhead, bring it down, exhale. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. Good to be back. Have a wonderful night, everyone. Oh, by the way, I put... Um, it, I put two new classes, not new classes, but two September classes on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. So for those of you who don't know, on my YouTube channel, I'm putting like after about like maybe when a class is about a month old or so, I put it on the YouTube channel and you can watch it whenever you want. It's, it's not going to go away. So you don't have to put it on your hard drive or get a copy. Okay. Bye, everyone. Have a good night.